Jamie, let's not beat around the bush. Let's get to the obvious question. There's been a lot of talk about your future at the moment. You are out of contract with Melbourne City. There's reports that you've rejected a contract extension offer, which you poured cold water on on social media. But I'll ask you again, has there been a contract offer that you rejected? Uh, no, in short. I mean, I call it how I see it and call it how it is. Um, there is obviously negotiations uh, with myself and the club and, and obviously other interested parties but you know my sole focus is I'm still contracted to Melbourne City uh, you know I've got the captaincy at this club I've played a you know this is my fifth fifth year coming up since 2019 when I joined um, I've always shown loyalty and uh, and that won't waver so yeah as it stands mate nothing's agreed nothing's turned down nothing's accepted it's as it stands it's my contract runs out in, in June and um, yeah, my, my sole focus is trying to get us back up the ladder because uh, our form hasn't been ideal and I've been used to high standards and uh, we're, we're pretty short of that at the moment. We're not happy about it and, um, and I'm sure the fans aren't either. Mm. You, as you mentioned, you are that you're out of contract in June, which means clubs can now get in touch with you. And you do mention, you did mention there a few other parties that you're not talking with. How many parties are we talking? How many are interested in you beyond Melbourne City? Oh, how many? How long is a piece of string, Joey? It's 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 one of those cases where it can be um, domestically or, or internationally, and um, and it's until something is in writing. Uh, it's it's down with my agent, Paddy Dominguez, and uh, all I can do is is make sure that my body feels good going into games, um, and, and keeping myself fit, and, and showing the boys that you know I'm am not distracted. It's the talk that's going on at the moment. Um, you know, I'm not the only player coming off contract, so let's, I'll make that very clear. Um, we've got a lot of boys on loan, so uh, there will be a lot of changes at Melbourne City next season, um, whether I stay or go. So, um, yeah, but that's not really something I'll, I want to delve into too much. I've kind of made it pretty open as much as I can, rather than uh, by saying that that statement was false, and it was, and I'm sure Melbourne City can back that up, and, uh, and yeah, we just want to move on. Uh, maybe just if you'll indulge me for one more question, mate. Can I just ask, what are your priorities for what you do next season? Because obviously there's the footballing aspect of it as well, and this is your job, so you need to get money, but you've also got a young family and all of that kind of thing. What is guiding your thinking when you're making your decision about what you do next season? Yeah, look, it's, it, there is a, a number of factors. Um, 30, I'm still at a very good age. I've played, you know, I did the numbers. I've, I've played 130 games uh, for this club, and. Uh, and haven't missed haven't missed so many games through injury, so I'm feeling feeling really good. Um, but you know, before I'm a footballer, I'm a I'm a father and I'm a husband. So I think something like that uh, makes you realise that there is bigger things uh, to look at. And I'm I'm not a, a selfish person where I'd rather um, see it as a collective and, and make sure that everybody is is happy in, in my life and around me because they've supported me through the, through the shit and through the good. So. Um, yeah, those decisions won't be made anytime soon, mate. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just looking forward to growing up uh, with my young daughter and, and keep my wife happy, which is which is a, a difficult task. Yeah, which is the most important thing, let's face it. But you did also, I'll ask you about another social media post after the result against the Mariners uh, the other day, you did post on social media, getting asking fans to stick with you. Um, I guess maybe do you want to just expand on that if you could for me, you know, what was your thinking in posting that and, you know, how, how are you going to turn this around? Yeah, I think uh, I've been at this place long enough and when I first joined, uh, this club had only won an FA Cup and, uh, you know, I always said that when things aren't going well, uh, that's where you really find who's with you, um, whether that's on the pitch or around. and. Um, it has been a difficult period. I remember a couple of years ago, we had the same thing. We lost three on four on the bounce and people were calling for PK to, to get sacked already. And, um, and then we turned it around. But uh, at the same time, this what's been difficult to, to understand is it's a whole new squad. And um, you know the, the standards that we set for all those years kind of went out the window a little bit. Um, and we've had to sort of build from the ground up again. And, um, and Vidi's done a fantastic job to try and steady that ship. And, uh, and we just need to, to get a win because the levels are so close at the moment that other than Wellington and Victory who are seven points or eight points clear, um, the spot to third is only three points. And that's something that still gives us hope because we have dropped some serious points which we're not happy about. We understand that, but we've got a, a lot of home games coming up, I think in March and April. And, 
and that's more towards the back end and business end of the season. So we're, we're looking forward to, to turning things around and you need your fans. Uh, we don't want uh, fickle fans. We don't want fans who one week say you're the best and the next week say you're crap. So, uh, and our fans uh, are well sure of that. They're going to stick by us and, and I know that for sure. You talk about the lack of continuity there, one of the things that is hampering this group and dragging them down, all the new faces. But I guess, on a, peeling that back a little bit, what is that lack of continuity preventing you from doing out there on the pitch? What are some of the areas that you need to improve on that maybe there will be a natural progression um, as the boys continue to get used to each other, but it's also something that you need to work on? Yeah, I think it's... it's a mixture of, of everything uh, you think about the boys that we're missing at the moment uh, who we have missed you saw the impact that Andy made you know just from 45 minutes on the weekend um, you know they're, they're characters that have been around through the trophies and when you don't have them on the pitch or, or going into battle um, players that aren't used to this league um, or, or used to winning trophies in, in the A-League know that it's tough every game you can get beat um, and as uncomfortable as it sounds you you won't know until you get to game day uh, who's going to turn up and, and that's something that uh, in the past we were always you know almost winning games in, in, the, in the tunnel and that's what we don't have at the moment and that's something that we can drive as players that have been around but also we've got some really big names that have come in and they want to improve and um, like I said we aren't happy where we are but someone has to sit seventh and someone has to sit third and between those is three points so we understand that and uh, and we look forward to turning things around and, and once it does, then I'm sure you'll see once our bodies are back and we've got full strength, um, we'll be competing uh, very well. And what about your own form, mate? I guess you sort of held up to a standard of your own making. You've been so otherworldly in previous seasons now, not quite banging in goals at the same rate that you have in previous campaigns. Yeah. Um, which opens you up to anal uh, extra analysis. What have you made of your own game this season? And no doubt you have areas that you want to improve on. What are they and how are you going to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, I always want to uh, improve daily. I try and improve daily. Um, but uh, I sort of get painted with a different brush as opposed to every other player for some reason. Uh, maybe that's because I've got five golden boots at home and, um, and everybody thinks at the start of the season I'm just going to click my fingers and at the end I'll be at the top. It doesn't work like that. This is sport. This is professional sport. Um, doesn't mean that I'm, it's through a lack of trying or a lack of wanting to score. Um, you know, I think my stats right now, if you ask the coach, you know, if you can have a striker that scores one goal every two games, that's what I'm sitting on at the moment. And my standards or my sort of uh, stats have been higher than that in the past. And it, it's something that I can't explain as a striker. And, I don't really believe in form, uh, I believe in quality and, and I think that I've got the quality. Uh, well, I've scored the most goals in 2023 but also um, I've got the record for the most goals in this league so I'm not stressed. Um, other people might want to talk about the form and, and you know things not going well but if there's chances coming my way then I'll, I'll put them in, in the back of the net. So, uh, And that's something we've been lacking at the moment. But once they come mate, uh, I'll hit the, hit the barn door as, so to speak and, um, and we'll just roll on like I have been doing. And you've got Adelaide United this week. This the fixtures between C and Adelaide, low key. They're you know often you know there's a bit of feeling in them. And Adelaide, even when you were so dominant, were one of those sides that consistently gave you trouble. Of course, earlier in the season there was that heavy result at Hindmarsh. What do you need to do uh, to get a result in the game uh, tomorrow evening? Yeah, look, they're they're a great side, very dynamic. Um, they defend really well, uh, well drilled with with Carl and Milsey. Um, so and they're obviously you know Joe's away, and, and t but but James has come in and done exceptionally well. So we know we're up against a very very hungry team. Uh, Ibasuki scoring goals, um, Halloran as well, and uh, yeah, we're going to be up against it. I think last time we we touched on obviously the the beating that we had in Adelaide wasn't anywhere near our standard, and they just had a, a night of nights and. Um, but we're, we're in a different place now, in a whole different uh, environment, and I think that you know coming into home games that are so important to get that form back, and uh, and we know that they're going to create chances, but but so are we. And one thing I will say about when we play Adelaide, the games are open, and that's what you want football to be about. Both teams want to win, and uh, and we'll be looking to do that. And um, but it won't be easy. I will say that, and we just need our fans to get behind us as a double header, and um, and yeah, we look forward to, to going out tomorrow night and and trying to get those three points and, and maybe sit third. Mm -hmm. 
And I know you mentioned 130 games earlier, mate, but I think it's your 150th across all competitions for Melbourne City uh, heading into tomorrow. I, I can't profess to have known that. Jack gave me the heads up. But, uh, but, but just, I, I, I've asked you this before, mate, and you've spoken before about that when you signed with Melbourne City, it was your hometown, and you wanted to become a legend of the club. You wanted to go down in the history of the club. Do you th- Obviously, in the short term, these things swing wildly depending upon your last game. But do you think... It, when you look back at things and when people look back on things and your tenure here, you're you're getting close to that point, if not already at the point where you will be considered a club legend? Um, yeah, I mean, 150 is obviously a, a big milestone for, for any player. To do it at one club is pretty special. To do it in the hometown is is even greater. But um, yeah, I think more more to the, to the case of I don't ask to be a legend, but you, all you can do is give your best, um, and it's up to people's opinions. Some some rate you, some don't. But um, I've always been the kind of you know, as long as I can stay on the pitch, injury free, score the goals, um, and get the appearances. That uh, yeah, it, it's down to, to what people think. But um, sometimes stats speak more than opinions, and um, yeah, I've got over a hundred goals for this club, and, and nothing makes me prouder to know that I've done that. And um, yeah, we look to, to build on that, that tally for, for games and goals um, combined. Is it what you envisioned when you signed five years ago? Did you think that you'd have accomplished everything you have when you got here or do you want more or did you not think you'd get to this point? No, I did believe. I think uh, when I did sign, uh, I mentioned to a few um, of the directors and, and obviously Michael Petrillo, I said, look, you guys won't regret signing me because I know that I'll score the goals um, and we'll bring the trophies. But it was a collective. We had to buy in from day one under Eric and PK and, and really know that this is a, this is a set standard and um, and we've carried that all the way through. And um, and I'm still hungry. I'm, I'm as hungry as ever. I'm only 30 years of age. Um, I know the contract talk people can say I, I might be uh, looking elsewhere, but I'm still as hungry as ever to win trophies. And uh, no one's as angry as me sitting where we are at the moment. And I'll, I'll make that very clear. And, and um, from an individual point of view and, and from a collective, uh, no one's more driven than, than me to, to turn things around. And that's why sometimes I feel like I need to, rather than articles, I need to put things on my social because it makes it feel real um, because I'm hurting after games when we get beat. Um, and I hope it's, it's hurting the teammates as well and, and we want to turn things around. So yeah, it's a proud moment uh, to reach the 150, but um, yeah, you won't find a, a hungrier guy than me at the moment.